In this video, I'm going to introduce you to partial derivatives. Partial derivatives exist as the solution to the following problem. How can we differentiate a multivariable function? Like this one, the function of x and y is given by x cubed plus 2 times x times y plus y squared. How do we differentiate this? We're using the derivative rules that we're already familiar with. Well, the rules of differentiation that we're already familiar with apply only to single variable functions. The solution, then, is just to differentiate this function as though it were a single variable function. Um, we take the partial derivative, just meaning that we differentiate with respect to a single particular variable, and we treat all the other variables as constants. For example, to take the partial derivative of this function with respect to the first variable, x, we can think of x as being the only true variable here, and think of y as being a constant. So we'll write it here with x highlighted, because that's our variable, and then y in dark, because y is just like a constant. Um, so we can rearrange this a bit. We've got x cubed, and then uh, 2y times x. 2y is just like a constant for our purposes here, and then y squared, uh, we're just going to treat that like a constant. Um, so now we're going to take the partial derivative, we're going to differentiate with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So we differentiate each term here, the first term, uh, x to the third, uh, differentiating that with respect to x, that's just 3x squared, and then the second term, 2y times x, differentiating with that with respect to x and treating y as a constant, well, we're just left with the constant that's multiplying x, which is 2y, and then the y squared term, because we're just treating that like a constant, it just goes away, because the derivative of any constant is just zero. To indicate that we've taken the partial derivative here, we write the function with a subscript x. x indicates that we've taken the partial derivative with respect to x, and held all the other variables as constant. Now, this is called the partial derivative because it's only one part of the derivative of f. The other part of the derivative comes from the partial derivative of the other variable, y. To compute the partial derivative with respect to y, we follow a similar process. Uh, first, we write the function uh, looking at y, interpreting y as our only true variable, and interpreting x as constant. So we've got x cubed plus 2xy plus y squared. The first term, x cubed, is a constant, and the 2x multiplying the y is also treated as a constant for our purposes. And now we're going to differentiate uh, this function with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So derivative of the first term, well first term, since we're just treating that as a constant, x to the third, that just vanishes, that goes to zero, so we don't include that. Um, then the second term is 2x times y, the 2x is like a constant, and differentiating that with respect to y, we're just left over with that constant, so just keep the 2x and then derivative of y squared with respect to y, well, that's just 2y. So end result is that the partial derivative with respect to y is just 2x plus 2y, and we indicate the partial derivative with respect to y by putting a subscript of y after the function. Let's do another example of computing partial derivatives. This time we want to compute the partial derivatives of this more complex function, f of x and y equals x times e to the power of xy squared. And one note that's gonna make this a little bit easier to write down is that the derivative uh, with respect to x, for example, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x of the function f xy can also be written using the notation df dx. Um, kind of like regular derivative notation, but with curly d's to remind us that this is a partial derivative. And as we'll see in these examples, um, this can let us think of the derivative as an operator, uh, and that, that makes the computations a lot easier to do. So first of all, taking the derivative with respect to x, we want to find f underscore x, partial derivative with respect to x um, of the function f. Um, and how we do that is we want to differentiate um, this function here, treating x as the only true variable and treating y as a constant. Um, so why don't we write this using this, uh, this curly d notation as an operator. So we want to find d over dx partial derivative of x e to the x y squared. So how do we do this? 
Well, it looks like we're multiplying two terms together, which each contain an expression of x. There's x, and then there's e to the xy squared. So we're going to have to treat these terms separately. We'll have to use the product rule here to compute the partial derivatives. So product rule just tells us to differentiate the first term. So take partial derivative of the first term x, and then multiply by the second term, which is e to the x y squared, and then plus the first term x times the partial derivative of the second term. So partial derivative of e to the x y squared. All right, um, now this is a little bit more doable. So partial derivative of x with respect to x, well, that's just one. Um, so one times e to the x y squared and then plus x times, okay, this one's a little bit tougher, the partial derivative with respect to x of e to the x y squared. This is a good opportunity to use the chain rule because the derivative of an exponential function with respect to its argument uh, just stays the same, then we just have to multiply by the derivative of the argument in the exponent here. So, so we'll have e to the x y squared, that stays the same, and then we just have to multiply by the partial derivative of the argument, which is x y squared, and that's that's easier to do. Okay, so let's let's collect our terms here. So we've got one times e to the x y squared. That's just e to the x y squared, and then plus x times e to the x y squared. I'll write that down, and then times this partial derivative. Now, remember y squared, y is being treated as a constant when we do the partial derivative with respect to x. So constants can just be moved outside of the derivative. So we can think of this as times y squared uh, times the derivative of just x. And then that's, it's clear that's just going to be 1. Derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So times y squared, write down all our other terms, e to the x y squared plus x e to the x y squared times all that stuff. And now it just remains to simplify our answer a bit. So we've got e to the x y squared plus x times y squared times 1, so just x y squared times e to the x y squared. And we can factor out an e to the x y squared out of both of these terms. The first one, um, e to the x y squared times one is e to the x y squared, and then plus uh, e to the x y squared times x y squared is e to the x y squared. Okay, great. So so this is our, our final result. Um, partial derivative uh, of f with respect to x is just this here. And we can also write that using the operator notation here, uh, df over dx is just equal to 1 plus xy squared times e to the xy squared. And there we have it. Okay, so now that we've done the partial derivative with respect to x, let's do the partial derivative with respect to y. So we want to find um, derivative with respect to y of our function and using the operator notation, that's just going to be uh, d over dy of x e to the x y squared. Okay, so how, how do we do this? Well, since y is the only thing we're treating as a variable here, uh, we're treating x as a constant, which means that this x in front of the e can be moved outside of the derivative. So that's just going to be equal to x times uh, d over dy of e to the x y squared. And again, we're in a situation where we can just use the chain rule here. Um, the derivative of the exponential function with respect to its argument is just going to be itself. So we just have to keep it the same and multiply by the derivative of the argument. So it's just going to be x times the exponential function e to the x y squared times the derivative of the argument argument is x y squared. Okay, so now this is just x e to the x y squared, and now to compute this derivative here. So again, since this is derivative, partial derivative with respect to y, 
x is being treated as a constant, so x can be moved outside the derivative. So times x times d over dy of y squared. And that's pretty easy to compute. The derivative of y squared is just 2y using the power rule. Um, and then so we've got x e to the xy squared times x times 2y. And multiplying all that out, uh, we have a 2. So 2 and then x times x is x squared. Then we've also got a y and an e to the xy squared. So derivative with respect to y of our function is 2x squared y e to the xy squared. And we can write that using the operator notation df over dy is equal to 2x squared y e to the xy squared. And there we have it. There's our partial derivative with respect to y. All right, here's our last example. We want to compute the partial derivative with respect to x of this function, f of x, y is y sine x divided by x plus y. And we want to compute it specifically at this point, pi over two pi. But the way we're going to start out is just like before, we're just going to go ahead and take the partial derivative and not worry about plugging in that point until afterwards, until after we've taken the partial derivative. So we want to find df over dx, and we can do that by applying the partial derivative to the function y sine x over x plus y. All right, now this is a quotient, and there's x on the numerator and on the denominator, so we're going to have to use the quotient rule here. Um, so let's go ahead and write the quotient rule. So that's going to come out to be, well, it's the derivative of the numerator, so d over dx of this numerator, y sine x, um, then times the denominator, so times x plus y, and then minus the numerator, minus y sine x, and times the derivative of the denominator, so d over dx of x plus y, and all of that is going to be divided by the denominator squared. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a bit of an expression to simplify, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and simplify this. So first of all, derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to x of y sine x. y is being treated as a constant, so we can just think about moving that outside the derivative and then take the derivative of sine x, the derivative of sine x is just cos x, so there we've got y cos x, and then that times x plus y, and then minus y sine x times this derivative, that's a little bit easier to think about, um, well derivative um, of x with respect to x is just one, and then y is being treated as a constant, so its derivative with respect to x is just zero, so so one is just our overall results here. And then, okay, so all of that divided by x plus y squared. Okay, great, so now we have the expression for the partial derivative, and we're ready to plug in this point here. So our next step is going to be substitute the point pi over two pi. And that's going to give us our partial derivative df or dx at the point pi over two pi. So let's go ahead and substitute this in. So y is gonna be pi. So pi cosine of x, x is pi over two. And then, so pi over two plus pi for x and y here and minus y here is pi and sine of x pi over two and then times one so we'll just leave that okay and then that's all over x plus y squared um so that's just pi over two plus pi squared okay so let's go ahead and evaluate this well well cosine of pi over two that just comes out to that just comes out to zero 
Um, so that's going to eliminate all, all of this term here, pi times 0 times this term. That all just comes out to 0. So that's just equal to 0, then minus uh, sine of pi over 2. Um, this is just, that's just 1. So minus pi times 1, so just 0 minus pi, then all over pi over 2 plus pi. Um, well, that's just, that's just 3 halves pi. So let's write that as 3 pi over 2. Uh, that's squared. Um, let's simplify a little bit. So on top, we've got negative pi. On the bottom, if we square the numerator and denominator here, we get 9 pi squared over 4. And then we can simplify this a bit by multiplying by 4 over 4 to cancel out that over 4. And then we've just got um, negative 4 pi over 9 pi squared. We can simplify this a little bit cancel out that pi and reduce that power by 1 and then we've just got negative 4 over 9 pi and there we go that is our result that's the value of the partial derivative with respect to x at the point pi over 2 pi in this video we focused on the mechanical procedure of computing the partial derivatives but in the future, we'll also build some intuition for what partial derivatives mean from a geometric standpoint.